So Bosch Shot Shells just released their first ever steel load. I never thought I'd see the day. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, we're gonna test it, we're gonna retest it, we're gonna test it some more. George here with the New Hunter's Guide YouTube channel, and do not forget about that podcast. I'm a regular hunter who just so happens to have a PhD and a low tolerance for marketing hype, trying to help people figure out what really works. And I was not supposed to make this video today. I was supposed to be making turkey hunting ammo videos, but then these showed up at my door right here. This is the Boss Steel Reserve. Now, I bought these with my own money. Well, well, all right, kind of. I'm a paying member of the BOSS program, and these were sent out to all program members. Two bags of these, 10 number one shot and 10 number three shot shells. All right, so BOSS is not sponsoring this video, but guys, I never thought this would happen. I am completely and totally shocked that BOSS would release a steel load. Nonetheless, I was totally excited to say, let's test it and see what this this thing will do. Now let's go ahead and meet these shells. We've got two of them. They're both three inch, one in an eighth ounce payload, 1500 feet per second, number three copper plated steel, and then the other ones are number one copper plated steel. Two different shells, not blended shot sizes. Now if you're like me, you want to know how many pellets are in these things. And while pellet charts abound across the internet, none of them are for copper plated steel. So I went ahead, took a couple of them apart and saw how nice this shot really was. Perfectly round, excellent quality, polished to a mere finish, no flecking or anything coming off of the copper plating, really good stuff. And then I counted the pellets and put together some averages for you guys. One size had the exact same number of pellets in two of the shells. The other side, it was plus or minus one pellet. So very consistent loading on this, or at least it seems so thus far. Now, why one and an eighth ounce? Why would you do this? Well, Boss's doctrine for these shells is that they are supposed to be for 30 yards and under. Boss is trying to put out a lower price level entry point into the Boss family. All right, so you could come in on cheaper for the steel and then you could upgrade to Bismuth, War Chief, or even Tungsten is in the works now. And so the idea here, this is their short range load. So they're saying that the steel reserve is 30 yards and closer. If you want to shoot 40-ish yards, that's the Boss Legacy Bismuth. If you want to shoot 50, 60 or more yards, that is the Boss War Chief Bismuth. So this is the close range load. And basically Boss is saying you can get 100% of these pellets or close to it in the 30 inch circle at 20, 25 or 30 yards. And at that point, you don't need any more pellets. The number that's in these will kill the birds as dead as they can die. You only would want more pellets if you're shooting further. And Boss says don't shoot further because steel is no good at long range, which every test I have ever conducted pretty much affirms that point. And so the idea here is we don't need more than a one and an eighth ounce payload, but if you have that one and an eighth ounce versus more, you can have lower recoil. And lower recoil helps a lot when you're shooting over decoys, which is exactly what this stuff is made for. You got two, three, four, five, 15 birds coming in, they're flapping, they're getting ready to land, or they've already started to touch down. If you've got less recoil, you can probably make your first shot count, second shot, maybe even pick up a bird on the third shot if you can have very quick follow-up shots. Now, how much less recoil are in these shells? Well, I reached onto my shelf that I have next to my desk and just grabbed a whole bunch of different shells that were there and ran the math on them. And I got these numbers right here for recoil. So you can see the Boss Steel Reserve did have the lightest recoil of anything that was on my particular shelf that day and significantly less recoil than some of them. Will it really feel like that? That much less recoil? Well, there's only one way to find out. So what are we gonna do today? 
We are going to test these, pattern test them at 20 yards, at 30 yards, and then also at 40 yards. Now, I know they're not supposed to be used at 40 yards, but we're going to test them anyway because that's just what we do. And of course, everything that I test, there's a benchmark at 40 yards so we can see how it might compare to other things. And we're going to test the number threes and the number ones at all these ranges. And we're going to run them through my Carlson Sporting Clays Modified Choke Tube. Why this choke? Well, Boss recommends a modified choke tube in order to help these spread more so that you have a bigger pattern at close range, which is what they're for. If you were gonna be using them at 40 yards plus, you'd probably wanna use a tighter choke tube, but Boss says don't do that, and I concur with them. So we're gonna do a modified choke. Now, I will be doing some choke tube test videos in the future, testing these through, I don't know, 10 different choke tubes. However, my Boss Steel Reserve rations that I got only had 10 shells in it, so here we are. We're gonna run these through my Mossberg 940 Pro Waterfowl with its 28 inch barrel, and then we're also gonna ballistics gel test the number one versus the number three, and we're gonna do that at 40 yards, just to see how much difference is there between the two, and then how much penetration will we get at 40 yards. Of course, if it's adequate at 40, it'll be more than adequate at 30 or 20 yards. All right, let's head down to the range and get the this test started. Well, we made it down to the range. I've got the targets here set up at 20 yards, ready to go. And of course, this shot is meant to be used over decoys. So I've got a couple decoys right here. We're gonna throw those down. All right, we should be all set to go now. Now we're moved back to the firing line. Got my eye protection on. I got my Tetras in for ear protection. We got the Mossberg loaded up here with the modified choke tube. We're gonna start with the number threes. At 20 yards, of course, we're gonna try not to hit those decoys. All right, now we'll hit the other one with the number one. All right, I'm gonna go swap the paper and move them back to the 30 yard line. Targets are moved back to 30 yards, decoys are still out there. We'll go hit them with the number three. And now the number ones. All right, guys, need to let you know, nobody is sponsoring this video, but I wanted to give just a free shout out to an outstanding waterfowl hunting book, Mystery in the Marsh by Jack Graham. This is a real book designed and written to be read to children, even very little ones, in order to help them cultivate a joy and passion and desire for the outdoors and for hunting. Jack's not paying me to say this, but guys, this is one of the best books I have ever read to my little seven-year-old. He fell in love with it, became his favorite book, and I seriously got into it too. Jack was just a regular viewer, sent this to me just because I was a dad a year ago, and man, guys, awesome book. It's on Amazon. I'll put a link to it down below in the video description. Let's go ahead and move this paper back to the 40-yard line. And we are moved back to 40 yards. I know we're not supposed to shoot this round at this far, but I do have the decoy still set up, so maybe that makes it okay. We got the number threes first. And then we've got the number ones. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at all these targets. All right, guys, I got all these targets laid out for you. We're gonna go through them pretty quick, doing something new today. You guys asked me to go ahead and draw that 30 inch circle and then mark all of the pellet holes in it to make it easier for you guys to see. It's kind of messing with my process, but let me know if it's worth the extra effort. We're gonna breeze through these. You could pause, rewind, do whatever you need to do. We're gonna start with the number threes and we're gonna go to the 20 yard line. And here you can see we captured the entire pattern in that circle. Although I imagine we would. Now the 30 yard, very few pellets outside of the circle on this one. I mean, basically 100%. Then the 40 yard, we did lose a couple of pellets, but very dense, tight pattern in there. Now the number ones at 20 yards, We've got the entire pattern in there, not one pellet outside of the pattern. At 30 yards, you can see here almost the entire pattern. 
just a couple of pellets that are outside. These ones at the top here, those went in one side and out the other because it was folded over. Then at 40 yards, you can see our circle here. Still really good pattern, even at 40 yards. Now I'm going to count every single one of these pellets, put these numbers into a chart, turn it into data for you guys, but it looks to me like, of course, 20 yards is great, 30 yards is great, 40 yards still looks more than viable for both of these loads. Now, nobody's sponsoring this video, but I ask you guys to please hit the thumbs up button to help this video reach more people. And now we're gonna go on and do the ballistics gel test. And now I have the ballistics gel set up at 40 yards and we will go ahead and hit it with our number three steel reserve. I'll go ahead and flip that around and then we'll hit it with the number one. All right, now let's go ahead and hit it with the number one. All right, let's go take a look at this ballistics gel. Check it out. From left to right, we've got the threes and from right to left, we've got the fours. So eyeballing it looks like three-ish inches for the number threes and then four-ish inches for the number ones. But eyeballing it's not good enough for me. It ought not be good enough for you either. So I'm gonna measure every single one of these pellets, write that down, get the data, crunch the numbers, put it in a chart, and get it to you guys in about three seconds. Well guys, that was about 800 pellets. And that was a lot of pellets. And as I was putting this data together, I was reminded of another data point. Check this out right here. I cannot believe such a small percentage of the people watching these waterfowl videos have not subscribed. What are you guys doing? What channels do you subscribe to? Come on, fix that, make it right. All right, let's look at the real data for this test right here. Check this out, guys. Looking at the number threes first, at 20 yards, you've got 158 pellets. Now, there was not one pellet outside of the circle. So I don't know if maybe I had multiple pellets. There were two going through the same hole or not. This should have been a 100% pattern efficiency. I don't know where the missing pellets are. Um, no idea. At 30 yards, almost the exact same number of pellets, 151. There were a couple outside of the circle. And then at 40 yards, you had 127 pellets. Still 76% pattern efficiency with a modest choke tube. Outstanding. Now you look at the number ones. 109 pellets at 20 yards. 108 pellets at 30. All right. Unbelievable. And then at 40 yards, 85 pellets, still 75% pattern efficiency. So what is the bottom line here from the pattern testing? Well, at 20 yards, obviously they're all there. At 30, obviously more than enough. At 40, still enough pellets to do the job for the number threes. I'd like to see 100 pellets in a 30 inch circle on anything that I'm shooting. So the number ones are just slightly below my threshold. But if you're talking about geese and that's just an accidental long shot, I think you still have more than enough to do it. But what does the power look like? All right, check it out right here. The number threes, 3.12 inches of ballistics gel penetration, more than enough to kill a duck at 40 yards. The number ones, 3.96 inches of ballistics gel penetration. Exactly what you want in order to kill a goose at 40 yards. Now, interesting on this, it was also a very cold day. Well, not very cold, but it was on the cold side, which means the gel's gonna firm up some, so you're not gonna get quite as much penetration as you normally would. Now, big question here, guys. Am I now gonna switch over and convert to steel shot? <sighs> No, no, it's not happening. I, I don't foresee that being the case now or at any point in the future. Why not? Well, I do a lot of long range shooting. Where I hunt in Western Pennsylvania, far from any flyway, many of our shots are passing shots and most of them, quite honestly, for me in the last couple seasons, have been jump hunting. I take more ducks jump hunting than I do over decoys. 
So for me, I'm gonna stick with the Bismuth War Chief because that fits what I'm doing the best. But if you are hunting over decoys, taking a lot in 20 and 25 yard shots, steel shot can't kill them any deader than Bismuth or anything else. This might be a good load for you, a good way to save a little bit of money. Now, if you wanna know more about why steel shot might still be viable, I did a video titled Five Reasons Steel Shot Is Not Dead and you can check that one out right here. If you want to see Boss Legacy against Boss War Chief Bismuth, you can check out that video right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Till next time, God bless you and go get them in the woods.